Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome in to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. We're going to do the big semifinal preview today. But before we get to that, the LEC getting in on some of this LCS drama. And I hope you brought your nostalgic glasses today because we got a reunion for the ages in the making. Heretics. We heard, I've seen rumors even last year, maybe wonder coming in to replace Evie, but now we're getting perks coming back as well for three-fifths of that peak G2 dynasty? Yankos is sticking around and he wants the boys, the band, to get back together. And we're starting it out with the drummer and the bass guitarist. Let's throw in perks and wonder into the question for Team Heretics. And right out of the gates, this is an interesting conversation about what type of expectations and pictures you want to pick, put in your mind thinking about what's possible for this new Team Heretics roster. Right out of the gate, you gotta be saying it's an upgrade overall for this Team Heretic squad, adding in the likes of Wonder in that top side to replace Evie, and then Perks jumping into the mid lane. Wonder over Evie, again, people were calling for last year, and that is straight up just an immediate upgrade. Wonder looked okay in the emergency sub situation that he had to do for Fnatic. A full off season under his belt scrimming with the team, I'm sure he'll look much better. Perks is a trickier one because, I mean, you look at the body of work last year, individually, Vitao was better than him across the board, especially in that summer split. The one angle I'm looking at here is just team synergy because obviously Perks has an established relationship with these boys and the goofiness meme lordery that's going to go on with this squad Maybe they didn't feel like Viteo would fit in that, but individually, unless Perks finds some of that old form, you feel like that's a bit of a downgrade. All right, whatever you want to call it, G2.5, G3, whatever this iteration is of getting the, the crew back together. Yeah, having that type of, of attitude, that type of fun and being of a group that is more so on that same level is going to be something that I think should play out better in the long run for a squad like Team Heretics. Perks is, is a player that is coming off of this past iteration with vitality and all that pressure, all everything that went with it. And now you get a fresh start with Team Heretics. And this is a player that does need that fresh start, but needs to impress in this fresh start. And I think with, you know, reuniting with Yankos, reuniting with Wonder specifically, though, it is that Yankos reunion. You're looking at how he was able to prop up a player like Perks in the mid lane, help enable him to be unlocked and, ex and expose the rest of the LEC to that power, that's the ticket for Team Heretics. And remember, this trio was one of the OG G2 lineups before Caps even came. This was the top side that took down RNG in that upset in 2018. Obviously, then you include this bot lane. Now, Flacket and Yankos aren't confirmed returning, but I, I think it's there's no chance Yankos is not going to be on this squad with Wonder and Perks coming. And I think Flacket had a pretty fantastic summer split where he was a top 380 carry in the league. So that's four-fifths old G2 when you include Flacket, who obviously used to play there. Kaiser in on the bot lane to round out the squad, and I imagine he's just going to be rolling his eyes at the madness that these guys are going to be screaming throughout games. No, nothing new. He was with the Mad Lions. He was alongside Carsey all those years. Got to be a little bit of a flashback for him. He's certainly the, the kind of the odd member out. But you know what? When you've got a group of jokesters having one serious guy, sometimes can be that exact mixture that you got to have to keep things grounded, keep it on that level. Someone like Kaiser can do that. This Heretic squad, right, loading in with Lackett in that bottom lane. I think this is a player that has reproven himself in front of the LEC faithful and said that I am a player that needs to be at this level and one that can be believed in that has some little bit more to grow at this type of room in the LEC. And I'm excited to see what he's going to do with these additions of perks and wonder coming in to prop up and push the expectations for a team heretics to be away from just, okay, new organization, try to lock up playoffs. And now you're locking in playoffs and you're trying to do damage in these playoffs. They better be hiring two or three new people to work on this content team because uh, they're going to have to be churning this out because they are quickly ascending into a fan favorite with this squad. You already had Yankos and Perks with Hooney at the World Championship. Come on, we got to be getting 
some of that content, some of that slice of action from the Team Heretics content create team. Now, this is 2023, 2024 going into. This isn't 2019. It's not like, I mean, aside from Yankos, who, let's face it, was probably the best jungler in the LEC last year, maybe behind Jack. Second best, we'll give him. But can they refine this form? I know Perks is a guy who's been up and down. In spring, he was looking pretty good, but, you know, two splits later, Vitality obviously completely fell off a cliff. We've seen his peak levels when he was alongside Yanko, so this team isn't all of a sudden the favorites and likely going to take down G2. There's still so many question marks around the rest of the LEC, but this is a team that should be top four minimum, you're expecting? Having an environment like they're going to have is one of those reasons why I'm so positive about this bounce back for Perks, what he's going to be able to do, how Yankos is going to help enable him to play at that type of level that we see and know is necessary for this for Perks and really necessary for this Team Heretics project to work out together, to have him be that star piece in that mid lane, I think is really what this is building towards. Someone like Wonder, we already saw with Fnatic, relatively stable, good option in that top side clearly an upgrade over what Evie was providing last year. So yeah, for me, this is easily a slam dunk, two thumbs up right out of the gates for Team Heretics. We'll see if the rest of the LEC squads can keep up with the hype off season that Heretics are putting together. Now we get to the tasty semi-final matchups at World, starting with what will surely smash viewership records. T1 versus JDG. Obviously, you go across the board and every single one of these matchups, you could watch the pro view of just that lane and it would be pretty damn hype. But in terms of key matchup, most important matchup, I'm looking at the jungle because before this tournament started, you would say this is probably the biggest advantage that JDG would have over the form that owner was in. But fast forward through the world's main event, and owners maybe been the best jungler at the entire tournament. I can't believe we get this matchup, and what a treat it is to have JDG versus T1. It's nuts trying to do an examination and looking lane by lane and trying to highlight something because every single lane matchup is incredibly important, and one of these ones that I think you could make an argument for why it is the vital the focus point of what needs to go right for either team. As you said, the jungle is a great one to look at. Owner versus Kanavi. And yes, the favor would have been for Kanavi heading into this event. Of course, seeing him at the Asian Games as well, getting a little bit of extra warm up. Things are looking great. And then we get to see Owner, the player that has been such a struggle point, so uh, such a focal point of the outrage towards T1 and their struggles. The player that looked arguably the most lost without. Baker in the mid lane and rises up to the challenge of this world championship, rises to the challenge of no more Korean teams except for T1 and delivers an amazing performance, a top notch performance against LNG. Oh baby, this is gonna be a jungle matchup for the decades. Yeah, I mean, he made Tarzan look completely lost throughout all three of those matches against T1. He ain't, the, he ain't the king of the jungle there, man. No, he was dethroned. He fell on the crown and stabbed him in the back. It was a complete mess. But the other big matchup and key thing to look at for me in this series is the bot lane and not just the matchup, but the pick ban that we're seeing. Because you heard Tarzan and LNG say after that T1 series, we knew they were going to have some spicy picks in the bot lane. We were anticipating it, but T1's champion pool is too deep and we couldn't deal with it. And we've seen the LPL it seems almost like the community strategy amongst the teams from that region has been get your ADC on something that's 200 years hyper carry. The Aphelios has been that big option. Zeri we've seen still there. And of course, top tournament favorites in Zaya and Kaisa and get them majorly ahead and use that advantage to pressure through and use our top-notch ADC skills to push over the edge and take these team fights. You look at the type of compositions, the creativity coming through from that duo on T1 of Guma and Kyria, that can be that answer, that counter punch to what has been going on. And they already showed that in the series against LNG, how they were able to dumpster the Aphelios and the answers that they had to that amazing Chinese hyper carry action that we had going on from these LPL teams. 
And I feel like what we saw at LNG was just, you know, the first page in Kyria's notebook of champions that he's willing to pull out. We've already seen him styling on people on the Bard. Fully expect to see some other crazy picks. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting six to eight bot lane bans throughout this series. You know, pulling away the power picks from Ruler and the JDG side, pulling away the kind of wacky stuff that T1's going to be busting out. If I'm JDG, I don't want to see a single thing of that Nyla Senna. I think that is one of the low-key underrated combos that came through from that LNG T1 series that really was a disruptor to what an Athelios, what an ADC wants to do in that type of position for these LPL teams. Ruler's going to have his hands full, and that has not been said too many times this year of what he's going to be facing up against that T1 bottom lane. Then you go solo lanes, and 369 and Zeus have been probably the two best Aatrox players at this entire event. So that you, you quickly look at these matchups, and you're saying, man, these teams need 20 bands to get through this draft phase. You can look at this and, and realize that this is obviously the road of redemption, revenge for T1. So many times the runner-up last year and all their failures, these is a lot of the, the return trips, the visits against these guys at this world championship you've already dispatched been a little bit earlier another old nemesis of Zeus someone who has done so well domestically and then floundered at these international events gets that result against Ben yes I know Ben is still alive at this event we'll talk about that but now he gets a chance against 369 another one of these very best top laners that we wanted to see him go up against he had the answer last year does he didn't he didn't have it at MSI because he got it again for this world. Finally, I mean, I can't believe finally. We're just getting to the mid lane when it's night faker. But to me, this is a statement opportunity for night to go against faker on the biggest stage. The goat of the mid lane night has been styling on people all year long. I know the mid lane isn't exactly in a meta where you're dominating the 1v1 laning phase, but this is an opportunity for Knight to really show up and show that he, right now, is the best mid laner in the world. It's always on the table when you get to go against Faker, that type of opportunity, that type of, uh, you know, praise and stardom that comes with it. But I think at this point for Knight and the rest of JDG, it's just focusing on getting that victory. They don't care about that extra that's going to come with it. But as you mentioned, for a player like Knight, if he gets this one against Faker, and this is a Faker that is in good form, a Faker that is showing individually that he is able to be a power player for this T1 lineup, yes, you got to be believing in that one. But I got to be saying, if you're coming for the head of the king, you best not miss. My boy Faker is going to be ready for all that pressure, all that extra attempts. Of course, we know that that is always the play against T1 and that Faker debuff where he brings in that type of attention. Best be ready to come at the king if you want to be taking this shot, Mr. Knight. I don't think T1 is getting 19 out of 20 neutral objectives against JDG, <laughs> but uh, if we were doing, you know, global rankings, JDG has been sitting in the clouds alone for about six months. But now all of a sudden, T1 is ascending and climbing up. Mark, are, are you believing in the T1 magic in this JDG matchup? Because they're still underdogs, despite looking so good. Let's... Let's not forget that. I think that has got to be an important uh, thing to stay at the very first part there, is saying that, yes, JDG still are these favorites. Even if you talk about this excitement and the hope on the side of T1, it is still that David versus Goliath of what we have seen this year, that Titanic JDG. And all that considered, I just want five games. I want five games. This has got to go the distance. I think both of these teams are playing well enough and are resilient enough to get us to that Silver Scrapes five-game final. And then I got to be biased. I'm going with my boys. I'm going with T1. We're keeping the hope alive. It's Faker in Korea. We have to have it. I I don't think our boy Kyria can handle a heartbreaking game five loss again. Don't do that to our boy. He doesn't deserve it. It's, it's insane that we're either going to get JDG with the opportunity to fully cash in the golden year, the only golden year we're ever going to see, probably. No team's ever made it to finals in the path for the Golden Road, so. Or we get Faker in a final at home in Korea as the last defending titan of the LCK. 
it's win-win as a fan. You're getting an amazing uh, storyline either way. But let's not forget, Ruler, I mean, I don't know the stats for sure, but he might be the only guy who has a winning career best of matchup against Faker. And you want to talk about, you know, drawing on past history, all these type of things to get yourself motivated, to find that zone, find that confidence in this series ahead of you. Ruler's just got to go flashing back to finals against Faker before where he's making that key series defining play that flash forward on that Tristana to seal it up and blow him up. This is what it's got to be. You got to be looking at these ones. You got to be pulling on that. If you're ruler, you're bringing the squad in. You're saying, I've taken him down. I've seen it before. This God can bleed. We can get it done. One thing's for sure. Based on what we've seen this year, you know this teaser video is going to be one of the the greatest that Ryan has ever put together. It better be with the storylines that you have going here. Let's not be sleeping on this other semifinal matchup. I know people are already saying winner of T1 JDG are going to be the winners of the finals. That's the real finals. But listen, we've said that in worlds past. And then all of a sudden you got EDG taking down Dom1 in the finals when T1 Dom1 was supposed to be the real finals. T1 and JDG is going to be going out to that fancy steakhouse. You're having, they're making the salad at your table. They've got the fancy different flavored butters for your bread. It's fantastic. But there still is something to be said for going for a nice classic cheeseburger and fries. And that's what you're getting with BLG versus Weibo Gaming. We're going to get some down, greasy, and dirty team fighting. And you better believe it's going to be going both ways, even if we're getting a winner out of this one. It's all you can eat, too, with Weibo BLG because you know the fighting's not going to be stopping with them. For me, I mean, you talk, the key matchup is also the most compelling matchup. You have to be looking at the Shy versus Bin. Both guys, you know, in the LPL and at Worlds, they lead the way in times getting a solo kill and getting solo killed because that's just the nature of both these guys. The Giga Chad of League of Legends versus the Giga Bin of BLG. Yes, sir. There's no mistaking it. You can be excited. Similar to JDG and T1 series, you can find reasons to be happy about all of these matchups. But unlike that one, I think without question, you're looking at that top lane. This is the two biggest players, most important players on these teams and what they're going to get done in this series. You better believe that that is where you got to be looking. And if, if there's a matchup that can break open this somewhat stale, tanky top lane meta, it's this one. Because I, I almost guarantee one of these guys is picking something like a Fiora in this series. We're getting some type of ego skill check. No question about 100%. it. That's got to come down from either one of these guys. Maybe both of them in the same game type of thing is going to play through. Looking at the Rumble pick as a very interesting one in this top lane. We've seen it be extremely powerful. We know the Shy is fantastic on it. A true menace. But we didn't know that Bin could be so lethal, so dangerous on this champion. This champion that he has said outright. I don't like this champion. I don't like playing him. I don't want anything to do with him. Hey, man, you want a lot to do with the results that you are able to put up with that Rumble in the top side. I think he's going to be a contested one. Of course, the Renekton is going to be a big one. Cassante are certainly some champions you're looking at. And I would not be thinking that you'd be betting against seeing either a Jax or an Aatrox in this matchup either. Yeah, I mean, Jax is going to be the main priority, either ban or take it away from the Shy. And I'm sure both Weiwei and Jun are going to be spending a whole lot of time hanging around that top side because uh, Bin and the Shy will be constantly fighting. And if Weibo did their homework, no J4 for Jun. No J4 for Jun. They don't make that mistake that we've already seen again. No way you're letting that one roll to five games. Can't be letting over that type of power. J4 has really risen up as far as the ranks of the junglers, the type of abilities that he has shown, the way that he can stick on to some of these carries, specifically something like Azaya in that bottom lane, a true threat in the jungle. And I know we've been highlighting Kyria and Guma for some wacky bot lane picks, but I mean, it's a lot less wacky, but we've seen Light and Chris pop off on Caitlyn Lux and completely annihilate some of these matchups. So even if a power pick like Zaya gets over to Elk, I feel like Weibo's going to have some kind of counter to cook up against it. It's impossible because on the other side, it's Ruler versus Guma. We're talking missing and Kyria. And then you roll into this one and you try to find that excitement. 
People are sleeping on this bot lane matchup and just how exciting, just how much of a pop-off fight that this could be between these two squads, what we're going to be getting here. I cannot wait for these semifinals. I know it's not maybe as exactly as how you would picture and draw them up outside of JDG and T1. This is about as good as it gets at these worlds, at these international events. I can't wait for these matchups. I'm, I'm excited to see what level Weibo is actually at because they've had such an easy road and we've said this team hasn't really been tested. Well, now you got a BLG fresh off of uh, taking down, you know, the 5% that thought they could take down Gen G getting it done. So I'm excited to see what level Weibo is at. Either one of these squads getting through to the finals is still great for a storyline. You got the Shy coming back, Zhao Hu getting to his first ever finals, or you got BLG, Ben and the boys, either finally trying to take down JDG or a rematch against T1. That's so good. It's so good. Whoever the script writers were, you nailed it. We had the Swiss stage and everything falling here and there right into knockouts and we're getting the slam dunks and semifinals buckle up folks get your popcorn ready these are going to be great games is it giga bin or giga the shy that we're talking about in these finals mark which lpl squads getting away with the dub my heart my heart is telling me it's giga shy in that top side my brain it's telling me we're going to see some giga bin once again it's going to be a healthy dosage of that one i think that blg is getting through with that 3-1 score I'd love to be wrong on this one. It, it does feel like BLG is the better, more consistent team, but as has been the story all year long for Weibo, it feels like on any given day, they could be the best team in the world if everything just clicks. If if Xiaohu is in form, if he's you know engaged on the day and ready to go, I think that we've got a chance that this Weibo team could push it to that type of level, could provide that type of danger of a threat to upset against BLG. If he's not there pressuring, taking advantage of a Yagao that has looked like someone that is vulnerable at this type of level, this point in the tournament, then it is GG Dunzo for the old Weibo squad. For me, semifinals are the best matches of the whole tournament, the best weekend to be viewing. So make sure uh, you're getting hyped up because you know, it's going to be an absolute banger. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching as always. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.